so thankful that you've tuned in. We don't know where to start in these wonderful lessons that God has given to us. And we pray that you will truly obey what his word says and understand the deity of Christ. This is so important in these last, last days. And those of you that have been following along with us, you can get all my lessons that I had on Prescription for Revival and all of the lessons about Second Peter. And this is so important that you do not forget that his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You must memorize that and give it to every person. Put it up in your home. This is what is needed today because the only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And we're going to have some lessons in the book of John. If you have never studied the book of John, I would like for you as you are learning about the deity of Christ, that is what John is teaching us. And you must study his book and find out all the many blessings and all the promises of what it means to be a child of God. We have to have that divine heavenly calling. Every person has that. We have to have that divine, heavenly birth. This is the most important lesson that you are going to learn, that there can be no other God that is as great as Christ that went to the cross to die that we could have eternal life. And I am making a list of everything that we receive when we receive Christ as Savior. And John 3.16, everyone knows that. And when you receive that gift of eternal life, that is so important. If you don't know any other Bible verse, this is the one for you to know. For God so loved you put your name there because every person in the world needs this that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life now that is one of the things that you receive when you receive the gift that Christ is to each of us that God gave us his only son. And then you see what he did for you. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. This is the gospel, which means good news. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now this is his crucifixion atones our sins. His resurrection eradicates our sins. So as soon as you receive this gift, here is what you receive. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 17, 3. 
we're going to learn more about this Bible verse in these lessons. This is life eternal, that ye may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And then you receive this divine love. Now, all of these lessons that I have been leading up to this is on my internet, which is GloriousMessage.com. The only way in these last days that we can live in perfect peace and perfect joy and perfect love is to know these lessons. This is what every person in the world needs. He loves us all the same. You cannot serve the Lord without having His divine love. And as you saw in my lessons on Second Peter, that we have now, as a true child of God, this is only these truths and these exceeding great and precious promises are ours. And His divine nature living within us, we've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We do not live like the world. We're going to find out in the next few weeks when we get back to 1 Peter that we are a priest of God. A priest of God. And we're going to learn that because we've got a great high priest in heaven and he is one with each of us. Everything in the book is about him. And everything is for you. That's how you live the abundant life. So in the book of John, we come to John, and this is for all true believers to read first. You never go past the book of John and become a child of God. This is for believers to understand the deity of Christ, and Luke teaches us that he is truly man. He is the same. There is no person like him in the world. He's the only person that never sinned that was born of a woman called Mary. He was born by the Spirit of God, a heavenly divine birth. That's why this is a heavenly divine message. We must worship now in this heavenly calling, come going to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, and to find grace to help in time of need. So we have seen that in the last days for believers, we have multiplied peace, multiplied grace, multiplied mercy, and multiplied love. And in the book of John, love, he is the apostle of love. Love is mentioned in this book only 21 chapters, 57 times. This is why we must know this book, to learn how to love one another. What joy this is when you study this book and see all that we have in him. John 14, 9, Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus saith unto him, talking to Philip, have I been so long time with you, and you hast yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. This is the most important thing in the world. To know Christ is life's highest attainment. 
And if you don't know this book, you can never live the abundant life that God wants us to live. You are going to be deceived by false teachers because today is the day of apostasy, turning from the truth. And Satan is trying to deceive the very elect. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace today to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank Thee that Thy grace is sufficient for every need. We're coming into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Thee. So we're asking for every person out there to accept this gift of eternal life by faith this moment. And we're going to see all that we have in thee in these next few weeks. And just let every person believe that it is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. And those of you that know these truths, that the Holy Spirit comes upon you with his divine blood and you receive eternal life. The life of the flesh is in the blood. If we do not believe in the blood, we can never be born again by the Spirit of God. We are asking for thee to save one hundredfold today, and thy word teaches us that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. So we're thanking thee today for victory. Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against these truths. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we are turning to the first thing that we are seeing in this lesson. When we turn to the book of John, we think of chapter 8. When we think of John, it is such a blessing when you read and understand what he has done for us. Verse chapter 8, we see in this first of all, in verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we're brought out of darkness into light first. This is so amazing. Then we have his Shekinah glory dwelling in us. That's his divine nature. And every promise in this book we can appropriate by faith. So this lesson in John chapter 8, Then said they unto him, the Jews, and remember when he was on the earth, it was to the Jew first and then the Gentiles. And now it's Jew or Gentile. We're all one in Christ. You see, it is a blood that unites us into one body. And there's no division in a body of believers. That's why there are no denominations and no religions. Because in the last days, we're seeing the one world government and the one world religion. And those are false, false teachings. And this is what we live by, not what the world is doing. And then said they unto him, Where is thy father? And Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. You see, everything he did, he pleased his Father. Now, we must see Christ in everything that happens in our life. We must see Christ in everything that happens and believe that he's going to answer our prayers. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God on this behalf. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him. They could not take his life. He gave his life. No man taketh my life from me. I lay it down of myself that I may raise it up again. He knew that he was going to the cross before the foundation of the world. That's how much he loves you. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, 
and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. I want you to write that verse down and say it over and over. John 8, verse 21. If you die in your sins and you haven't accepted the gift of eternal life, you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. You need to write that down and teach it to every person that you know. Because we're to love each other. And then verse 22 then said the Jews, will he kill himself? And I want you, all of you people that are even considering killing yourself, suicide. You are not ending it all. You are, you're, you are going to a place of torment because your soul never dies. And it is the blood that makes an atonement for your souls. So I want you to understand that you will never even have a drink of water, no water to cool your tongue. And if you want to know where that is, that is in Luke 16. The rich man that died, he just wanted someone to touch his tongue with the water. And you must understand these things. And this is, Jesus said this, and not one word, he's not a man that he can lie. And he saith unto them, you are from beneath. Now, see, you're going to go down. You're not going to go up. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Write this verse down, too. That's verse 24. You see, this is the word of God. And we must get this out because if I don't give this to you, your blood will be on my hands. And that's the reason God put me on here for you because I don't do this for money. I do it for him, for the glory of God and for you. And this is the most important thing. And now listen, at ver this is, we must understand when he's telling us these, that this is what is still today the truth because this is the only book that's the living truth. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father, because they didn't understand that his Father was God. That's why his deity is important. And then we see in verse 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. You see, he says, without me, you can do nothing. I couldn't do this without the Spirit of God being my teacher. And you can't worship him unless you worship in spirit and in truth, this word of God. That's how you know. And then he says, for I do always those things that please him. Now, we should ask ourselves, do we always do those things that please him? That should be our desire. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you are not a child of God, you are in bondage to sin. You are a slave to sin. You must understand this. You talk about slaves, you don't know nothing about being a slave. You are going to be a slave all of your life. And then when you go to hell, it's going to be more horrible than anything anyone can mention. The worms crawling all over your body in pain all the time. And your memory, you still have your memory because the gates of your soul is imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. You see, this is why he's got this in here. And listen what he said. You are free now as soon as you accept this gift. Listen what else he says. And verse 33. 
they answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. They were in bondage for 400 years in Egypt and they were brought out by the blood, just like we are. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? You see, you have to have the Spirit of God in you to understand this. And listen what verse 34 says. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin, is a slave to sin. Right here you are. You want to be free? Accept Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can ever be free. Ever. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. You see? What did I say? You become a child of God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. You receive that gift, and right there it is. You become a king. All these are yours. And then he says in verse 36, once again, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. All the blessings of this lesson. I am so excited to give this out. And I taught John so many years ago that I had forgotten how important it is. But this is the most important thing. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, the holiness and resurrection of Christ prove his deity. Now, I'm going to read one verse right now in Romans. Of course, I'll be going back to Romans because that's a very important book on the deity of Christ. Romans 1, verse 4. Now listen at this. And declared to be the Son of God, that's what he is, deity, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. He's deity. This is the most important thing. And then we see in Galatians 3, I must read that because you must understand what Galatians says and this is something that you will never forget. The justified believer is a son in the family of God. And this is Galatians 3, beginning in verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. See, we're one. Neither bond nor free. Right here it is. There is neither male nor female. We are the same as a female, as a male. As a Jew, every person in the world is a Jew and a Gentile. You're either one or the other. And you now are one, no matter who you are. You see, that's why there's no religions. Because religions are fighting against one another all the time. You have to know this book. It's all about Christ. He's the Son of God. And verse 29, And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. See, he called Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and gave them that land. And they are going to be reigning with him in the thousand-year reign with Christ. When they see the nail prints in his hands, they are going to recognize him as their true Messiah. In the Old Testament, they were looking for a king that they were going to have an earthly kingdom. Ours is a heavenly kingdom. But those that receive Christ as Savior, we're all one. And then they are going to be brought out of darkness into light when they see Christ. So the true children that are born of God through faith is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And now I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 2. You must see these lessons and understand how great our God is and what we have in Him. You will never be depressed. You will never have fear. You will always live this abundant life. He says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, this, this can only be known by the Spirit of God, which is divine, eternal life. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, 
neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed them to us as a child of God. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. That's the only way you can know them. And then verse 16, I love verse 16. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. This is what you need to know. And then we, we go back to John 8. I hope I get this in. If not, I'll read it next week. John 8, 42. They said, you do the deeds of your father. And then said, you, we be not born of fornication. They're accusing him of being born of fornication. Jesus saith unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from my father. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, Be even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil. The lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. You see, you don't know when people are telling a lie because you don't know the truth. That's why you have to know the truth. You see, every lie you tell, you obey your enemy, Satan. Every lie you tell. Now, next week, we're going to get into 1 John 1, 1, that teaches us he's the word of life. And then John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, but the darkness comprehendeth it not. So he is the living word. This is the only book in the world that is the living book that will teach us how to live to please him.